guys, it's Ashley, and today I'm going to be doing the mid-year book freakout tag 2018 version. For the past two years, I think, I've done this tag twice now, um, every year, and it is time for the third edition of the mid-year book freakout tag. Side note, my dog is actually in here right now. It's raining and thundering outside, and this is the only time I have to film, um, and he's scared of the thunder, so he's just kind of chilling. And if he makes any noises, that's that's what that is. Also, another side note, my mom is currently shopping for furniture. So if you hear my text tone go off, that's because she's sending me photos of things and she doesn't know how to stop, even when I tell her that I'm filming. Okay, let's get started. So the first question is the best book you've read so far this year in 2018. For me, this has to be Obsidio by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. This book was phenomenal. It was such a good ending to the trilogy. I'm so, so happy with it. And if you haven't read this series yet, what are you doing please get on this. It will break you and also you will adore it. <laughs> the second question is the best sequel that you've read so far this year and for me this is going to be Wild Card by Marie Lu. This book actually doesn't come out until September or October I believe um, but this is the second book in the Warcross duology. It's the ending. It is so so freaking good. I liked it so much better than the first book and I cannot wait for you guys to read it because I just loved it so much. Oh my god. Yeah, you guys need to read Warcross right now if you haven't already because this is going to come out in September and you will want to hop on this. It's so good. I read it so quickly because it's not a very long book and just overall, I just really, really loved it. <laughs> the third question is a new release that you haven't read yet but you really, really want to. Um, for me, I have two books for this. The first is A Reaper at the Gates by Saba Tahir. I just finished my reread of An Ember in the Ashes and my first time through A Torch Against the Night so freaking good and phenomenal, so I cannot wait to get to this book. Um, fun fact, Saba Tahir actually came to Florida in Coral Gables uh, last night. Today is Sunday. She came Saturday night, and I was planning on going and vlogging it. Then I realized that Coral Gables was two hours away, and I didn't want to have to drive up from Miami at midnight, so... Here we are. The second book that I have on this list is Restore Me by Tahera Mafi. Um, I have it at the very bottom of my pile there, so I don't feel like getting it out right now, but I still haven't read it, even though I really want to, and I just need to get on it. I don't have any excuses at this point, I'm sorry. So the fourth question is your most anticipated release for the second half of the year. For me, this is gonna be Vengeful, which is the sequel to Warcross. Nope, that is not what I wanted. For me, this is gonna be Vengeful, which is the sequel to Vicious by Victoria Schwab, V.E. Schwab. Um, this book is so good. I read it for the first time last year, even though it came out five years ago. Oh my god, so good. It is an adult book, so it does have some very dark themes that it explores, and if you are not comfortable with it, um, then please don't pick this up. Um, there is suicide in this book. There are very dark things, so if you have any trigger warnings whatsoever, I don't recommend. But if you're looking for a very dark, deep book that really explores the side of like villains and the minds of like, I can't even explain. It's just so good. Dang, can you hear that rain? It like just started pouring. Next question is the biggest disappointment of the year for you. Um, I really haven't had very many things that I've been looking forward to reading and then have not turned out well. That typically doesn't happen with me. Um, but the only one that's currently coming to mind is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. Now this wasn't a super disappointing read for me. I really did enjoy parts of it. It's just other parts I didn't enjoy as much, which brought it down to like a three-star book for me. Um, one, I wasn't particularly interested in the romance, and two, I didn't particularly enjoy reading from the main character's perspective. So those two things kind of threw me in the book, and I wasn't particularly fond of it. How many times can I say particularly without stumbling over my words? I don't know. The next question is the biggest surprise you've had this year, and I don't know where I put this book. I genuinely cannot find it anywhere, but that is going to be the fifth season by N.K. Jemisin. Um, if you've heard me talk about this on my channel before, that's because I've been talking about the books I've been reading for school this past semester. Um, this was one of them. This is a fantasy slash sci-fi, but more so fantasy book. Um, it's very confusing, very weird when you first get into it and I didn't think I was gonna like it, but I thoroughly enjoyed it and I was very surprised by that. Especially because it was a school book, I don't really like required reading, I never enjoy what I read, but this one I actually really liked and I flew through 
really, really quickly. Next question is your favorite new author who is either a debut author or is new to you. Um, and for this, I'm actually gonna go back to my second question, I believe, that I answered, and I'm gonna say Marie Lu. Now, I did read Warcross. Oh, no, I read Warcross this year. Yeah, so it does count. I really, really actually love her writing. Ever since I read Wildcard, I've been wanting to read more of her books. I know that she has two other trilogies, um, the Legend Trilogy and the Young Elites, so I'm really interested in reading those. I just really, really like her writing, and I'm really surprised by it. Um, even though I know Marie Lu has been a really popular author on BookTube for a very long time, so I'm kind of surprised, but also not that surprised. It's kind of hard to explain, but um, I really enjoyed it, and I want to read more of her books. So the next question is your newest fictional crush this year. Um, I am going to have to go with Elias from An Ember in the Ashes, this series, this quartet. I love Elias. There's not really much more that I can say on that topic. <laughs> Next up is your newest favorite character. For this, I have two characters, and that is Nina and Inej from the Six of Crows duology. I read this for the first time this year, finally finished it, it was so good, and I just love Nina and Inej. And I loved these characters, they're so badass, they're such kick-ass women, and it's more of what we need in this world. And I'm so, so happy that I read this and actually really enjoyed it this time. <laughs> Next up is a book that made you cry this year. I am going to throw it back to Obsidio because it was the last in the trilogy. This trilogy I love so much. I love it to death and this book like genuinely made me cry at the end. No shame. No shame. Okay, next up is a book that made you happy this year. Um, originally when I was planning out this tag, I had picked When Dimple Met Rishi by Sandhya Menon. Um, I still do stand by that fact. That book did make me very happy, but I recently read another book that I actually think went really a lot better in this category, and it's gonna be Leah on the Offbeat by Becky Albertalli. This was one of my most anticipated reads of the year, specifically because it is stemmed from Simon versus the Homo Sapiens agenda, um, and I really, really loved that book. I was excited to read this, but I didn't really know what to expect. That's kind of where I'm coming from with this. This story is all about Leah um, as she's not really coming to terms with her bisexuality. She knows that she's bisexual. She's coming more to terms with how to tell people that and how to deal with that in her everyday life while also dealing with the fact that she's about to graduate high school and her life's about to change and she's gonna have to say goodbye to a lot of her friends and like all of this stuff is happening all at the same time and it's a whirlwind and it was just really really good. Now granted, while Leah deals with some problems that I personally don't, you know, have to go through in my everyday life, I related to her so much more than I ever thought that I would, and this is the most that I have related to a character, just personality-wise, since I read Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. I was so astounded. I was in the middle of reading this book, and there were just so many things that Leah did in this story that just immediately resonated with me. Um, the one that stands out the most to me is for her, when things got tough, when she couldn't make a decision, when she didn't want to make a decision, or when she, you know, wanted to do something that she knew somebody else wouldn't like, she just kind of immediately shut down. And she just kind of kept to herself, locked herself in her room, did not want to talk to anybody. That is so me. It's not even funny. While I do like talking about things that are bothering me sometimes, a lot of the time I will internalize it and I will just kind of shut down. Um, if I can't make a decision on something, I will get in one of these moods and I just don't want to talk to anybody because I don't know what I want to do. And I don't, it was kind of the same way with Leah. And immediately when I read it, I was like, holy shit this is how I feel. Like, this is how I normally feel. And it was so, so weird. There were other things that, you know, I definitely related to in this book. Um, that's just the one that stands out the most to me right at this moment. But if you haven't read this yet, if you haven't read Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda yet, please get on that. It's adorable, and you will absolutely love it regardless of what kind of books you enjoy reading. Um, this book was really, really good as well. I don't know. I don't have anything else to say for this. I really loved it, and it surprised me way more than I thought it was going to. Next up is your favorite book to film adaptation you have seen this year. For me, stemming off of the last question, I'm gonna have to go with Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda. Its film adaptation, Love, Simon, was so, so good. 
I loved it so much. Um, I actually just rewatched it last night with my mom. She had never seen it before and she wanted to watch it and it was on one of these websites that we used to watch videos. So we ended up watching it and it was so, so freaking cute. Oh my God, it was so much better the second time. I mean, granted it was good the first time, but it was so much better. I genuinely have not watched a better, you know, YA adaptation since that one. I just, it was, oh, it was so Granted, they did change a few things, but those changes just made it even better. And like, usually changes make it worse. And I was so, so surprised, so stoked. I just, hands down, I loved it. Now this isn't part of this question, but I'm gonna add it in anyways. Um, the worst book to movie adaptation I've seen this year, to me, was actually Ready Player One. Now the movie itself was, it was okay. Like, it was good. If it had not been based off of a, you know, book, maybe I would have liked it more. But, um, nothing about the movie and the book were the same. Basically, my god, the thunder. <laughs> Basically, what it seemed like was the person who wrote the screenplay took the idea you know, there is this virtual reality video game, the creator has died, created an Easter egg that these people can find and inherit his fortune. He took that idea and he basically wrote his own story with that idea because literally nothing from the beginning of the story was the same. I, I think I would have enjoyed it if it hadn't been based off of a book, but because I had read the book, because I enjoyed the book at least a little bit, um, the movie itself, it didn't feel anything like the book. And, you know, granted, Book to film adaptations, you're not expecting them to translate everything to screen exactly as it happened, and I'm not expecting that either. My dog's right below me and he's shaking uncontrollably, so I'm gonna like stand like this as I pet him. There comes a point in a book to film adaptation where you're taking the book and making your own movie versus adapting the book. And I felt like with Ready Player One, they basically took the book and made their own movie with it. I'm gonna try to wrap this up just a little bit quicker than I normally would have because it is thundering uncontrollably and my dog is shaking to death. The My favorite video that I've made this year is the next question and that for me is my scripting Illuminae video. If you haven't watched that yet, I had a lot of fun. I have yet to do a part two and I'm very sorry about that. Um, I will get around to that eventually. I don't know when, but I'm really looking forward to it when I do. The next book is the prettiest books that you've bought so far this year. And these two books I haven't actually bought but I did receive at Book Expo and they're gonna have to be the Rick Riordan Presents books that are coming out, the Storm Runner and the Dragon Pearl. These are beautiful next to each other and just adding in Aru Shah and the other books that they're planning to release beautiful. And the final question in this video is what book do you need to read by the end of the year? Literally all of them just all of them. So guys, that is it for the mid-year book freakout tag. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you are watching, um, go ahead and comment down below the best book that you've read so far this year or the best adaptation that you've watched this year because I don't really know of many book to movie adaptations that have come out. So let me know down below. But that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you later. Goodbye.